Anyways, let's move on. We oppose feminism, deviancy, and the futile denial of biological reality, and everything destructive to healthy relationships between men and women. There's a lot here, so let's unpack it. Feminism. On its face, it sounds okay. Equality between the genders? Who doesn't want that? But if you look at its face, well, you'll notice it's a land whale and lipstick real quick. But if you dig deeper, modern feminism is female supremacy, demanding privileges at the expense of men based on lies like patriarchy or the gender wage gap. The problem is this philosophy is driving a wedge between men and women both legally, through divorce courts and welfare incentives, and socially, through patriarchy theory and misandry campaigns like hashtag kill all men. Deviancy? I don't know what they mean for sure. But my best guess is that this refers to homosexuality and transsexuality. Whatever your opinion on their lifestyles, it's not the state's role to intrude on what consenting adults do on their property. If gays don't have property rights, then you don't have property rights. I hope the alt-right understands this. Though to be fair, it's not the state's role to even exist. Feudal denial of biological reality. Now, I'm going to push back against this. You see, I sexually identify as a robot dragon. My pronouns are yin, yur, yis, yam, and yabba dabba do. If you don't like it, then you need to check your organic privilege. The foreign policies of European states, including immigration, diplomacy, and war, should be based on the safeguarding of its peoples. Again, another statement of grievance. I don't know, I mean, doesn't immigration make us stronger? Oh. Oh, maybe they have a point. American citizens should enjoy freedom of speech as guaranteed by the Constitution. We endorse this value for all European peoples. No, no, absolutely not. You must respect my right to identify as a robot dragon. But don't you want to know who doesn't respect your robot dragon identity so you know exactly who to disassociate from? Well, um, I, I still don't see what the alt-right's point here is. Freedom of speech is still respected throughout the Western world. It's a cornerstone of that democracy thing they love so much. It's, it's being eviscerated, isn't it? Afraid so. All U.S. citizens and all Europeans should have the right to bear arms as a means of protecting themselves and their families and enjoying the manly sport of hunting. Yes, yes, all of my yes. Economic and political globalization, however, has been destructive to authentic cultures. Industrialized countries are being transformed into great nothings and nowheres, indistinguishable concrete dumping grounds and shopping centers, divorced from culture, people, and history. <laughs> okay, now you're just being ridiculous. It's not globalization minus culture. It's culture plus globalization. I mean, look at all these beautiful blank architectural wonders of, uh, where, where is this? Or, where, where are we? Where, where's this? I, I, I can't tell. They want to tear down what? Okay, okay, I get it. Cultural distinction is being torn apart. Leftism is an ideology of death that must be confronted and defeated. Losing gracefully will eventuate in the destruction of our people and civilization. The political spectrum is worthless, but for the sake of argument, let's continue. There's a serious problem here. I mean, imagine you're in Antifa, and you're reading number 14 off this list. Wouldn't you feel validated? I mean, look, there's the Nazis who want to defeat you, right there. All right, if you're watching, here's the truth. Most people don't want to associate with either of you, but conservatives, libertarians, and ANCAPs like me, we want Antifa to double down on their totalitarian instincts. We want everyone who's less Marxist than Joseph Stalin to be driven out, and we want the socialists to eat their own. Antifa is the best argument against socialism anyone could ever come up with. Whatever you do, do nothing to suggest that Antifa might have a point. Do not drive people away. All economic policies 
should serve the people of the nation. The interests of businessmen and global merchants should never take precedence over the well-being of workers, families, and the natural world. Honestly, this wouldn't be out of place in a Soviet workers' manifesto. Freedom best serves the people of the nation. The problem we have here is that people have nominal private property rights. The state decides how businesses are run and how much money they're allowed to keep. The best economic policy? Absolute freedom. The total abolition of government. They should never have been abandoned by American whites of older generations and should be reestablished as jewels of our civilization. I am only vaguely aware in the ways in which cities were taken, ceasing to be, as they described it, jewels of our civilization. I, so I don't know enough to answer this one way or another. Might be fun to look into one day, though. Next! European countries should invest in national parks, wilderness preserves, and wildlife refuges, as well as productive and sustainable farms and ranches. The natural world, in our experience of it, is an end in itself. European people should invest in national parks. I wouldn't trust any government to park my bicycle, let alone my car, let alone run a friggin' national park. The best way to protect the environment? Private property rights. The 68ers. <laughs> oh my god, you can't be serious. This is amazing. Let me tell you a story. I grew up conservative. My dad has been a conservative since he was nine years old when he recognized fake news for what it was, even in the freaking 70s. One thing he always said was that the class of 68, referring to how all those socialists in media and politics shoved shoveling socialism down our throats, are all in the same two, three year age range. It's personal, but this reference is freaking hilarious to me. The alt-right is completely correct here. The baby boomers in the class of 68 squandered the glories of the greatest generation on the altar of statism and have nothing to show for it but debt, stagnation, war, and demographic displacement. It's time for Gen X to have a chance and never, ever, under any circumstances, let millennials hold power or leadership. But I'm a millennial devil! Modern education, from preschool to the doctoral level, has become corrupted past the point of recognition. I don't know what he's talking about. Public schools are indomitable bastions of learning and education. Oh. Well, maybe they just need better funding? At, at, at least they aren't indoctrination centers. Okay, seriously now, they haven't become corrupted at all. Their original form was to serve as indoctrination mills to turn curious children into unthinking, obedient soldiers and workers loyal to the state. In this way, schools are working as intended. A man distinguishes himself by his deeds, and every man, in his own way, must strive to be something more than a man, to be honored by his heirs, to be part of something greater than his self. Okay, this... this... This doesn't mean anything. It's just gobbledygook, be better than the man you were yesterday stuff. I'm all for self-improvement, but sorry, I'm not going to be a part of anything. I'm not a cog. Look, the way I see it, the alt-right is just one side of the coin on identity politics, the other being Antifa. Both are motivated by politics, the ability to impose one's will on others politically. The relentless politicization of, well, everything in our society and relentless pursuit of identity politics has driven people to one side or another. As Jeff Deist puts it, the only solution to political violence is to make politics matter less. But until we recognize that the only people who win from this conflict, if either Antifa or the alt-right win, is the same high priesthood of statism that caused these problems to begin with, well, until people recognize that, Charlottesville, it was just the beginning. <laughs>